And former governor of Oshun State, Goega Oyetola, is one of the first ministers to assume office. He was received by the permanent secretary who handed over a document brief to the minister. Uh, for Minister of Solid Minerals, uh, uh, Solid Minerals Development, Delia Lake, he also resumed office where he met with senior official, uh, officials at the ministry. The Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Adun, assured that he will work towards ensuring the temporary inconveniences occasioned by the removal of full subsidy and exchange rate unification uh, uh, are also alleviated. Mr. Edun spoke shortly after assuming office at the Ministry of Finance. He says there is need to deliver on set targets as the president already set the ball rolling through policy measures. The new ministers of information and national orientation, art, culture and creative economy, as well as Minister of Tourism, arrived at the National Press Center at the Radio House Abuja uh, today to assume the new assignment. Well, just a day before the swearing in, President Bola Tinubu had ordered the redeployment of former Governor of Oshun State, Adebwe Goyitola, from the Minister of Transportation to the Minister of Marine and Blue Economy. The President also redeployed Abu Bakr Momo from the Minister of Youth to the Minister of Niger Delta Development. Both Ministers of State in the oil and gas sector are now domiciled in the Minister of Petroleum Resources with the uh, following designations, Heineken Lopobiri, is the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources in charge of oil. Peripe Echo is the Minister of State Petroleum Resources in charge of gas. The President also approved the renaming of the Minister of Environment and Ecological Management as the Ministry of Environment. Former Minister of Works Adeshaye Ogunlewe and legal practitioner Jiti Ogunye uh, join me on the program via Zoom for more on this development. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, the swearing-in of the ministers is coming 84 days into President Sinubu's administration, approximately three months. Uh, Senator Gulewa, let me begin with you. What do you make of this time frame relative to the campaign promise of hitting the ground running? Well, you know, there will be a lot of restructuring. About 12 new ministries were created. A lot of thinking a lot of planning must have gone into it. So, and it is worth it. Let us see how, what they can do, how they can perform. Because there are critical areas that have now been designated as ministry, like gas, like steel, like um, communication, innovation, and digital economy. These are critical areas of marine and blue economy. You know, you have now to separate all the ministries, you know, make sure they, there's appropriate redeployment of appropriate staffs. So it, it is not too, too late, De definitely. It is, it is worth the, our while for them to do it properly, think about it properly, so that they can achieve maximum for the benefit of the country. Mr. Oguye, we saw a few reshuffling and change of ministry name a day to the swearing in, uh, we probably now understand why the portfolios were not assigned to the names when they were initially sent to the Senate. What do you make of this? Well, the ideal thing is for, thanks for inviting me, the ideal thing is for uh, ministers to be designated for certain political offices uh, when they are being screened. In other words, it's better to screen ministers, uh, minister designates, against the portfolios to which they will be assigned. These are the best international practices. This auditing that we celebrate is not uh, the best. You, you don't um, examine or screen people at large. You don't screen people in the dark. I'm speaking literally now. Both the person being screened and those who are screening do not know for which offices they are screening uh, those who are appearing before them. And so it's like a theater. This is not what happens uh, in the United States and elsewhere. And I think that this started with uh, President Richard Gomez. Unfortunately, that legacy has been built upon from time to time. Uh, I had thought while the campaign was going, 
that things will be done uh, differently. But overall, now that we've had these um, uh, eminent Nigerians uh, okay. assigned to their portfolios, we hope that uh, they will hit the ground running. Talking about like hitting the ground running, uh, Mr. Ogunye, these new ministers now have to tackle the problems of sluggish growth, a weak currency, high inflation, and of course, widespread insecurity. How challenging is it to be a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria today? Very challenging and daunting for those, and we must assume, uh, if we are going to be charitable, we must assume that those who have been appointed are going to these offices to serve. For those who are serious-minded, and there's no reason we should not assume that they are serious-minded, uh, who are going to occupy these offices, uh, the task is very is very challenging. And that's why I would have wished, for example, that this minister had come earlier. You know, uh, you know, the, a lot of We'll have to get back to Mr. Ogunye in the course of this conversation. But let me quickly hear from Senator Ogunlewe. Um, let's look at the, the fact that, for instance, there's yet no portfolio for the senior minister of petroleum resources. And many are already suggesting that perhaps we'll see the president oversee that ministry the same way it happened with um, President Obasanjo and I think um, President Mohamed Buhari. You were a minister at the time. How effective would you think, do you think that has been in the past cases where we've seen this happen? You know, I don't think that that tradition should be sustained or continue, if you ask me, that you have a minister of state for petroleum and then the president will be superintendent. Uh, there's nothing so special about petroleum resources except that that's where you know, our major resources, you know, uh, come from. Nigeria, until very recently, you know, when uh, there was a lot of uh, pillage in that sector, it used to be a mono, mono economy, uh, you know, uh, fired by petrol dollar. Um, when uh, the former president came to power, I had thought that would make himself the minister of defense because that was his forte. You know, we have Boko Haram to deal with and all that. But unfortunately, it was the Ministry of Petroleum that also zeroed in on, like it's been done now. Mm. So I was saying before now that I thought that if the ministers have come earlier, perhaps they would have helped the government. A very critical moment. For example, when the labor movement was engaged with government in discussion so early, oh, I was wishing that, oh, I wish that there was a minister of labor to help uh, navigate uh, help the government navigate the process. So, since there was no minister of labor on that occasion, so they had to All be right. with the presidency that matter. And so, also, it's the issue of the economy. It's Indeed. good now that we have a coordinating minister of the economy. The mm. economy is is, uh, is, a, is something that this government has to tackle with all seriousness. So, um, in sum, I, I wish them well, uh, and I hope that they work for Nigeria. Nigeria deserves to work for I Absolutely. Deserve, let me let uh, me let me bring in distinguished in very quickly, uh, um, Senator Ogunse. You were minister of works under the Obasanjo administration, and he, I think, also doubled as um, minister of petroleum. How did that pan out? I mean, is that something you would suggest this administration uh, should follow? I think it's a fallout from from the military administration. We are the Play a lot of premium on the Ministry of Petroleum as a, 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 a determining factor for the growth of the economy. Probably the president would like to have a direct influence on what is going on in that sector. I don't know. But, but that has ever been did it of... work? Would you say it was successful? Because we've seen it under the Obasanjo and also um, Buhari administration. Uh, the MD of um, of the uh, MP NMPC was very, very active. And because of that, uh, one would not notice 
any form of uh, gap, whether the president or the minister or not, because majority of the job were being done by the MD of NMPC. So he's just a coordinator, or maybe to be on top of whatever they are, they are doing. But majority of the job will be done by the MD of NNPC. Mm. So uh, there wasn't much of reshuffling of the cabinet in the previous administration, Senator. Uh, uh, where should the line be drawn between the president's loyalty to his ministers and also their performance in office? How often should that be revealed? It depends on the content of the assignment of ministerial responsibility and the policy of the party, the manifesto of the party. What the party wants to achieve should be itemized thoroughly and given to the minister to execute. But where you allow a minister to formulate the policy for you, it leads to destruction of the national plan. So once you have a very robust national plan, which is very, very important, then the minister will key into whatever is highlighted in the national plan. So it will be easier for the president to monitor them, to determine whether they are performing well or not. But where you don't give a minister a tax, like I identify the responsibility, what is achievable first year, second year, third year, so that he will, he will, he will be guided. Mm. So and he will perform for your own dictation. If you allow him to determine whatever he wants to do, yes. then you may not be able to, you know, to monitor him properly. I hear you distinguished. Let me hear Mr. Oguye's thoughts on this, uh, because some of this hit, uh, some of these ministers, Mr. Oguye, are you know, two-time governors of their state. Some of them even aspire to become president. How easy will it be to have these individuals aligned to a particular vision? when they're probably coming on board with a lot of original ideas and things they've tried out themselves in their respective states? Well, well what you didn't say is that they're also coming on board with a lot of hubris and ego. Uh, some of them have been executed themselves, and so they may uh, tend to then function uh, independently. Well, initiative is good. Uh, thinking out of the box is good. But in the presidential system of government, uh, the president is the boss. He's the one that won the election. He's the one that has the mandate. It is not uh, going to be productive and healthy and progressive for a president to just leave his ministers to formulate policies on their own, you know, ask around for those who have ideas and then start implementing them. I agree completely with uh, Senator Ogulewe, that um, the TOR, terms of reference, uh, timelines, uh, areas of responsibilities, all these things must be well defined and tasks must be assigned. Because ministers, uh, if you look at section uh, 148 of the Constitution, are to help the president to discharge his function. They are to help him to carry on uh, his mandate. And so they are not the ones to spoon feed him with ideas on how this should be done. There are programs and policies of the party, political party, APC mm -hmm. in this instance. So the ministers, regardless of their background, are supposed to key in. Because when the next election comes, you know, what the people will ask is that, these were your manifestos. What did you do with them? And so on and so forth. And so I expect them to work in unison. I expect this president to be more accessible so it's ministers. You know, the last time the president was saying, and he was even making a boast of it, that uh, he was not to be seen all the time. So if the chief of staffs uh, stated that he should not be seen, so be it. How do you have a president that his minister cannot access for six months? Some of them came out, they'll be saying it in close sets that they couldn't access the president. So it's not an imperial presidency. This president so has early. promised an open so door early. policy. Perhaps it's something we can count Ooh, on, Mr. That's the point I'm making. That's the point I'm making. So early, this president has been meeting with his party people. He has been, as people have been meeting. I, I, that's how it should be. If you want to govern, you want to be a president. You can't be a president and say you are not a politician. You are not accessible. You sit down somewhere and then your people cannot see you. You know, right. they should be able to discuss with you and then, you know, Indeed. run 
the machinery of government in such a way that our people who have value, value, and value for entrusting them. With I hear you, Mr. Okunye. We have just about three more minutes to go. Distinguished, let me get your thoughts on the number. We have um, some 45 ministers now. It was 36 in 2015. Your former principal even reviewed his downwards uh, from 40, I think, in his second term in office. Do you think we need more ministers? Whatever the number, what is important is the attitude and position of member of the National Assembly in the area of appropriation. No matter how brilliant a minister is or the policy of the president is, if it is the National Assembly member refuse to key into it and they start to distort and paddle and, paddle and, and, and you know, add additional projects to the budget, they pad the budget, they add unnecessary you know, projects to, to the budget, they distort the budget to the extent that when you come back to the ministry, you will find so many sort of, you know, new projects that were not originated by the ministry. So what can the minister do? And it is the money provided under the Appropriation Act that will, that will determine the performance of the minister. So the president must, from the beginning, appeal to Mr. Russell, if you have any project, take it to the ministry so that it will be incorporated right. into the budget of each ministry. Indeed. Don't now introduce new projects at the National Assembly level that will distort the, the, the plan of each of the ministry. It's a very critical I mean, situation. Very, very bad. Unless it is nipping the board, we, we will not be able to grow as a nation because the distortion is heavy. I hear you, you distinguish. You can see some minister, minister Indeed. they will say, all these projects that are in my budget, I don't know anything about them. Hmm. It's, it's a, a good crisis. place to leave it. Former Minister of Works, Senator Adeshaye Ogunlewe, thank you so much for joining us. Duty Ogunye, lawyer you, and man. human thank rights you. activist, thank you so much for your contribution on the show today. It's my pleasure. Well, we now have substantive ministers. Their time has started and Nigerians are watching closely. Mr. President, earlier today, did say that their obligation is to return public faith in government so that the people can once again believe in government. And we're looking forward to see how they'll be able to achieve this in the coming days and coming month. That's our show today. There's a repeat at midnight and at 6 a.m. tomorrow. I am Nifemi Ogunto. We'll see you again at the top of the hour.